The largest galaxy that has formed since the supposed Big Bang has a mass of 3.75 quintillion suns. Our Milky Way, a mass 2.5 billion times less. But this weight in terms of human brains is about this. In 1896, Austrian physicist Ludwig Boltzmann proposed a concept that would eventually lead to one of the most bizarre explanations for the origins of our universe, the Boltzmann brain. At this point in his life, Boltzmann was heavily invested in his studies of thermodynamics, exploring the natures of heat and entropy, and his work in this field laid the foundation for our current understanding of the physical world. Boltzmann introduced the concept of entropy as a measure of the disorder or randomness in a system, and he formulated the famous second law of thermodynamics, which states that in any closed system, entropy tends to increase over time. With the introduction of this new law, the realm of physics was given the all-encompassing concept known as the arrow of time. What is the arrow of time? Picture this. You have a clean canvas, and you decide to put a drop of paint directly in the middle. You observe the paint spreading until the whole canvas is covered. But why is it that we never see the paint go in reverse and group back into a drop in the center? If you were to zoom into a molecular scale, you would simply see the paint molecules moving around and colliding completely at random. However, the arrow of time in a way describes the likelihood of any outcome. Long story short, the amount of canvas covered by your initial drop of paint is much smaller than the canvas itself. As soon as the drop is placed, there are multiple new points of which the paint can expand to. And it just so happens that when all is said and done, these new points always outnumber the original points, hence making them always much more probable. But going back to the molecular scale, there is no reason that the paint molecules cannot randomly accumulate back into a single drop. It's just that this is all that it is, random. Given enough time, say this many years, you would see the paint form back together as one single drop. You would even see it perfectly replicate the Mona Lisa, and even create a portrait of you. This phenomenon is best described by the law of truly large numbers. In the context of this video, this law states that given a near infinite amount of time, any event that has a probability greater than zero is likely to be observed. An example of this in our world is the irrational number pi. We all know that there are infinite digits in this number, but one thing most people don't know is how there are also all possible number combinations in pi. Your birthday, your phone number, even your exact DNA sequence translated to binary all exist at one point or another in the digits of pi. We know it is unlikely that a human or any living thing for that matter could live long enough to observe these number combinations or any highly unlikely possibility. The universe, however, still has a near infinite amount of time left. It is believed that once the universe has expanded enough, it will create a cosmic horizon, much like the event horizon of a black hole. This cosmic horizon, in a way, limits the reaches of the universe, creating a seemingly empty, albeit completely new, observable universe. And in the same way that the event horizon of a black hole emits Hawking radiation, this cosmic horizon would also emit particles, or fluctuations, inwards towards the new universe. After an amount of time so large that even numbers struggle to represent it, the last particle will be emitted, leaving a vast emptiness full of nothing but individual elementary particles, and finally we reach the final state of the universe. Or is it? The particles left over from the cosmic horizon, like any particle, undergo quantum fluctuations. But what are quantum fluctuations? When you zoom into a sub-molecular scale, you would observe random variations in the properties of any quantum system. The reason for these variations are best described by a concept known as Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. The uncertainty principle plainly states that we cannot know everything about a particle at the same time, like where it is and how fast it is going. Because of this, there are times when the particle might change in unpredictable ways creating a quantum fluctuation. Now, the emptiness of this new universe is much like the emptiness of a fresh canvas. And if we zoom in, we see particles moving around and colliding completely at random. Eventually, given enough time, these particles will combine and form atoms, then molecules, until eventually they will recreate the entire universe as we know it. So, is it possible that we live in a sort of dream of a past universe? 
possibly, but the chances of this happening are near zero. So by the law of truly large numbers, it might take a near infinite amount of time. However, if this is truly the final state of the universe, then time should be no problem, right? Well, let's explore another possibility of what the random motion of the particles could eventually lead to. While the largest galaxy that has formed since the supposed Big Bang has a mass of 3.75 quintillion suns, and our Milky Way a mass 2.5 billion times less, this weight in terms of human brains is about this. Why human brains? With our current understanding of the mind, a human brain is all that is needed for consciousness to emerge. So while it seems like the accumulation of matter forming a new universe is all but inevitable, what does this say about a universe that is full of floating, conscious human brains? This is a universe that in the big scheme of things would be much more likely. Which brings us back to the original purpose for the Boltzmann brain argument. Ludwig Boltzmann believed that the universe is not as chaotic as it seems. He believed that in the universe's final state, it would spawn spontaneously fluctuate to a lower entropy state, like that at the beginning of the universe during the time of the Big Bang. He came up with the Boltzmann brain hypothesis as a way to defend this theory, by the use of reductio ad absurdum, the form of argument that establishes a claim by showing that the opposite is, well, absurd, meaning that if the universe was in an ever-increasing state of entropy, then the emergence of Boltzmann brains is not only likely, but possibly even more likely than us being real creatures creatures in the original universe. Renowned physicist Richard Feynman says about the Boltzmann brains, it is the origin of all irreversibility that makes us remember the past and not the future, stating that we are only able to remember moments that occurred in a lower state of entropy or of higher order, further strengthening the arrow of time and its relation to entropy. While Boltzmann has undoubtedly changed the game when it comes to our overall understanding of thermodynamics, he is far from the only one to imagine an alternative source for our consciousness. The many worlds interpretation is one such alternative. It was proposed by physicist Hugh Everett, who sought to explain how the mathematics used in quantum mechanics related to physical reality. This interpretation basically states that all possible outcomes of a situation actually happen simultaneously in different parallel universes. Imagine you have a set of 10 dominoes. You are given the choice to either knock them over or to leave them be. According to the many worlds interpretation, whichever choice you make doesn't really matter because there will always exist a universe where each different option is chosen. If you choose to leave the dominoes be, then in a parallel universe, your identical self will choose to knock them over. When all is said and done, only one event occurred in your universe, you choosing to ignore the dominoes. However, in the parallel universe, 11 events occurred, you knocking the dominoes over and each one of them falling. Now, replace the dominoes with any decision you have ever made in your life. One step further, with any decision any human has made, ever. Imagining such a a possibility really highlights both how our universe is completely unique and how there seems to be an infinite number of universes with infinite possibilities. When this idea was first proposed by Everett, there was an immediate backlash from parts of the physics community. They call many worlds a theory instead of an interpretation. One of these opposers even said that calling many worlds an interpretation is like talking about dinosaurs as an interpretation of fossil records. However, despite the controversy, the many worlds interpretation like many of the other interpretations, does a good job of helping us wrap our minds around the world of quantum physics. It could help explain some paradoxes that arrive on the tail ends of certain thought experiments, such as Schrodinger's cat. The massive number of possibilities that arise when considering these thought experiments and theories can leave us speechless, to say the least. Are you a Boltzmann brain floating through space right now, and you are just dreaming about watching this YouTube video? It's unlikely, but it is possible. Much like the emergence of life on Earth, extremely improbable, yet here we are as the only known intelligent life in the universe. But who's to say that it all stops here? You could be a floating brain in the vastness of space, or you could be a brain in a vat connected to a computer. The whole universe could be a computer simulation run by higher beings, or perhaps the most equally terrifying and inconceivable possibility, in the end state of the universe, much like that described by Boltzmann, the eventual accumulation of molecules could give rise to a type of computer. On this computer is a simulation of an entire universe, finely tuned in its own manner, giving rise to familiar concepts such as quantum fluctuations. And it is here that we find the perfect stage set for the endless reincarnation of the universe.